now we come to a toroid okay and a toroid is nothing but a solenoid bent around so that it forms a loop right <clears throat> so this is a toroid it was earlier maybe a solenoid so i have kind of kind of it, it will say something like that and we have bent it over so 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 this got bent okay and so did this so so we bent it all around so that so that okay so, so we bent it some more and more so that it actually acquired a shape of a loop right that is what a toroid is now now let me let me remove this so 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 i take a i take an amperian loop right which is here which goes like that right what's our aim our aim is to find out the field inside this toroid right now how does it look let us say let us say if if i slice it off okay from the middle so so let us say it is something like this okay it is something like that and and kind of i i slice it off in the middle okay in the middle and and then try to see then what happens let us say the current is coming from here so this wire also got cut okay so it is coming out from here then it is entering here right right so if it comes out from here it enters here it enters here it enters here right so it comes out from here enters here and, and this will keep on happening all along the periphery right so so i'll draw some more wires so here let us say if the currents are going in then they have to be coming out from from here right so so and and whenever it comes out we show it as a dot to to simulate the equivalence of of an arrow that is being shot at you and you see the tip of the arrow right and if it is going in then you must have seen that an arrow that an arrow has has these these an arrow or 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 a dart right it has it has it has these balancers if, if they are not there then this arrow will go haywire it does not follow its track right they actually help to reduce the turbulence behind so that this arrow goes straight in the intended direction okay if there is if there is a turbulence here okay then what happens due to this turbulence if if there is there is a low pressure here then this end will tend to move like this and the whole arrow will get bent like this even if you have shot it in this direction right so so this is what is done by these fins they help to reduce this turbulence and let the arrow move in this direction and if you look at this from behind they look like this okay those four they look like this so whenever something is going away from you you show it as a cross and when it is coming towards you like like an arrow coming towards you what do you see you see its tip okay so so that you show as a dot fine okay okay so so if 
if it is something like this and i take the loop a fine then what happens for loop a what happens b dot dl okay i i saw let's say b1 dot dl okay the loop has to be a closed one is equal to mu not into i enclosed okay this is the ampere's law correct this is the ampere's law is the ampere's law correct now what is the current enclosed by this loop does it include any current no it does not enclose any current at all so so this is mu not into zero which is zero so b dot dl is equal to zero correct now there are two things okay there are two things that that this integral can be zero okay so so two cases may arise one is when this b is always perpendicular to dl then this b dot dl will always go to zero right there is one the length dl is never zero that means that the magnetic field is zero the the length dl is never zero so 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 that is ruled out otherwise there would have been three cases right that like dl itself is zero so the so the first case is first case is that that b is is perpendicular to dl always right right now you see this is a whole toroid right so so it is kind of a circular thing that is going all along like this okay and the inner thing is going like this you see this is the tubular kind of thing and you have the wires right so you have the wires that are wound around this okay so so they are say like this so let us say okay and and the current is coming like this so the current as per the diagram that i have shown here the current comes out here right and then goes in and goes like that from behind so it enters here goes like that from behind and again appears like this from here right this is what is happening in this again it goes from behind comes here and appears like this from here right here it is like this do we get the point correct so you can understand that these are single coils stacked one beside the other not in a straight manner if it were all straight it would have become a solenoid it is it is 
stacked in a circular fashion. It is like so many bangles that you that instead of stacking like this, you stack in a circular fashion. So obviously there will be a crowding here and there will be slight distance here in the outer fringe, right? Because they are the same number of terms, the same number of terms and you have got more area out here. Right? A, to a, a toroid is an endless solenoid. It is an endless solenoid. Yeah, that, 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 that's what it is. It, it's a, a straight solenoid. You take, take the other end and you kind of bend it in a circle and connect it to the, to the, uh, to the, to the other end. That's what it is. Okay? You have to bend the whole thing in a circular fashion. Sir, so the plane of all those circles would be at some angle to the other circles. Yeah. Yeah, so all the circles, they will be at an angle to the other circle, yes. Yeah, the angle has to be the same. Yes, the angle, if you have bound it uniformly, that angle between two circles is the same. Because, because see, if you have uniformly bound it, if you have uniformly bound it, and let us say, there are 360 turns, then each of them has to bend by one degree. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it will not complete the circle, right? Or if it, if, if it one is two degrees, then two others have to be lesser, right? So if you have uniformly bounded, which you normally do, okay? Which, which you do in all the cases. So, so the angle between any two is always the same. If they are 720 turns, then they'll all make half degree angle with each other, right? No, it won't, as, as we'll see right now. Now you see, due to each of these, due to each of these, in this plane, okay, in this plane, if you apply the right-hand rule, that means if you, if, if you put your thumb like that and, and the fingers like that, then they will be giving you a field like this, right? If you put the th your thumb into the into the plane of the paper because it's going in, it is going in. So if you up, if you put your thumb like that, and then your fingers will curl like like this. You see that? So so due to this, due to this, the field that that this makes is in the same plane, is in this plane in which I have taken the Amperian loop. Thumb is in outward. Thumb is into the, see here it is going in now, here it is going in. So you put the thumb into the paper. Do that, it's a three dimensional thing. You put the thumb directly pointing into the screen. Okay, like this. So, so what do you see? You see that, you see that the current will be clockwise, the, the field will be clockwise. No? Is it not? What do you mean? Right? Due to, due to this element here. Now there are so many elements of this coil. Okay? If, if you apply this, this fundamental, then every coil, then any coil actually has, then any coil actually has, has, so, so this is a coil, so this coil, if, if, if it is carrying a current like this, it has a tendency to create a field in, in this direction, you see that, like that. This, this thing is perpendicular to the plane of this coil. Do we see that? Do we see that? So, so this will, this will be, this will be, this field will be something like this. You do one of the coils. And then there will be another coil due to which the field will be say something like that. And another coil due to which the field will be something like that. Okay, so the field is at no place perpendicular to to the to the DL that you are traversing, right? It is not perpendicular.
okay you might feel that maybe this is a perpendicular okay maybe this is a perpendicular or or this is a perpendicular but 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 what if i sh slightly shrink the size of my amperial loop then what happens then that will no longer be the case fine so so what happens this this does not exist it does not so happen that at all the points of this loop the field that you experience is is radial right that will never happen it, it it cannot be kind of like this 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 the net field cannot be like this so we connect uh wired this is on the toroid the back field right no, i i think it is yes same we are passing current through the wire which is we are passing the current through the wire so it is connected to a battery right yeah somewhere it is connected to the battery so sir agar hamare aise current hai to this means hamare magnetic field hai which is in here yeah So how will the short perpendicular? No, because because ultimately due to these coils, this is the kind of field that these coils will be generating. No, this is the field that a single coil generates. Say like that. No. no? So all those fields are in the chain of the loop that we take. All those fields may not be in the plane. all those fields will not be in the same plane not in the same plane because an an element an element that is here okay that will create a field that will make an angle with this plane b dot dl cross uh, mu not i dl cross r by its over right it and those points is immediately next to the there due to those elements it will be in the plane all of these things it will be in the plane right so 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 this does not happen so the only other case the the second case is that b itself is zero that b is equal to zero which is the case so so what i am trying to say is within this toroid here the field is zero right here not within the toroid right here the 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 donut kind of hole that it has there is it right so field is zero field is zero in the inner circle now i take the outer circle let us say this right what have we said while discussing the um, ampere's law that if you take a loop and you stretch a membrane across this loop now where have i taken the loop i have taken the loop to be i have taken the loop to be to be such that that it exactly if if i extend it or maybe if i stretch a membrane or if i if i kind of make this membrane then this membrane will divide this in two equal halves right it will divide it in two equal halves so so and what have we said while we were discussing the abbeus law that the current the i enclosed will be so taken that it will be so taken that if you stretch a membrane a, a say a rubber membrane across this then the current that pierces this membrane will be i enclosed 
right now just imagine that this membrane kind of cuts through this so this is what you get right this is what you get and let us say i am traversing in this direction then we had also discussed that the current whether it will be positive or negative will be this will be will be decided depending on the direction in which we travel and that direction also is the right hand thumb rule and what have we said that if i curl the fingers of my right hand along the direction in which in which the current in which i decide to traverse the loop the thumb of my right hand will point in the direction of positive current correct so if i curl the fingers of my right hand and and you should do that along this then your right hand thumb will point out of the screen right so all the currents that are coming out they will be counted as the positive current correct so so this is say u u v so for u v this has nothing to do with the magnetic field b right so for loop b b dot dl is equal to mu not into i enclosed now if you see there will be as many currents which are coming out as will be going in correct so the total current and the and the current that comes out we are taking it as a positive current so the currents which are going in will have to be taken as negative. a negative current so so current pointing towards us pointing towards us is taken as towards us is taken as positive and that pointing away from us from us is taken negative so together together this i enclosed will be zero the positive current will cancel the negative current and again i land with the same thing and, and this has to be a closed loop so so don't lose sight of that it has to be a closed loop so ampere loop is a closed loop the gaussian surface is also a closed surface right so b dot dl has to be zero and we again go through the same arguments and there are two cases either at all the points this is perpendicular or or this itself is zero and and by the same logic you will find that that this b is actually zero for loop b as well now we come to a loop that goes into this right so that goes into this So why can't DL be zero? Why can't DL be zero? L. DL. DL. Because you are traversing. You you are going through. You are starting from a point, going all along the loop, and coming back to the same point. So DL is actually the length of that loop, no? One at small small steps at a time. So that cannot be zero. now if i traverse in this direction right and this you should also understand from the solenoid point of view that this was if this was a solenoid 
okay and from the outer this thing there was current coming towards you and from here the current was going in and you had bent it in this direction right then it would have looked something like this no correct it would have looked something like this if i had bent it like that no so the inner would have been carrying a current inside away from us and the outer periphery would have been carrying the current towards us this is what this is what is there now now in this fashion the field that you'll have will again follow the right hand rule so that you if you if you curl the if you curl your your fingers around the around the direction of the current then the direction of the field is in the direction of your right right hand thumb and that will give you so so if if you do that then then your fingers will be kind of curling like that curling like that okay so, so this and maybe this then then your thumb then your thumb will will kind of point like that is it not if you have been gripping it with your right hand with with your fingers coming out from from this direction then your thumb will be pointing in this direction and that is the direction of the the feel in this right that is the direction of the feel so so the magnetic field was found to be in this direction right now if i bend it like that in all probability this field will also kind of bend like that is it not the field will also follow the same trajectory and the field will also start moving like this so 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 it will follow exactly the same trajectory in which i am moving around in the amperian loop can you just stretch it for a while and make it a circle you don't even stretch it you need not stretch it you just kind of bend it in a circle so the you magnetic field bends and it all forms like it will look like a donut can we divide it into small solenoids and then make it into elements the the whole trouble is the whole trouble is that at each point this starts bending right the field that starts kind of bending Okay, so you have to take the, you have to make use of one small straight solenoid. Okay, that will also yield you the same result, right? You 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 soon see it's the same thing that is happening. Now, so here we say if if I go around in loop C, okay, in loop C, and and let me do that here. I want this to be visible. So so if this is loop C, right? So for loop C, what happens? My B and D L are in the same direction. Are in the same direction. Do we see that? and b at all points is the same because it was the same uniform field that we encountered in the case of the solenoid right g is a constant throughout get that so from ampere's law B dot B L 
is mu naught i enclosed. Now, if you stretch a membrane across this, then it is pierced only by the current in the inner periphery, right? The current that is that is going in. Do we see that? No other current cuts it. And by the rule in which the positive current goes, if you curl the fingers of your right hand in this direction, in the, in the clockwise fashion, then your thumb will actually go into the screen, right? So the current that is moving into the screen is the positive current, right? It is the positive current. So, so this is equal to mu naught into whatever is the number of turns, correct? So, so let us say the number of turns is n. And each of these are carrying a current I. So this is the total current that is enclosed by the by the stretched membrane on the Ampere's loop. Do you get that? Fine. Now if that happens and this B and DL are in the same direction, then the angle between them is 0 degree. And we have already said that B is a constant. Okay, the magnitude of B is a constant. It is not the B which is a constant because it keeps on changing its direction. So the constant comes out and I am left with GL. And this is mu naught Ni. Now what is this whole DL? That is 2 pi R. Okay, mu naught n i. So my b becomes mu naught n i upon 2 pi r. Right? Where r has to be the radius of, of this circle that I have traversed. Change, right? Yes. Depending upon the person. It can be changed very correct. So, how would we that is depending on the person? Hold on. That can be changed. This is your R. But we take the mean radius between them. There is an inner circle and there is an outer circle. The value of B that I am giving here is in between the two. Because it must be in between. Okay? Do we get the point? That because it must be in between. No, because, because as you start going away, as you start going away, this, this B will start going down. Okay? This B will start going down as, as you start moving away. Had it been a straight line, till that point it is it is uniform, but as you do, as you bend it like this, then there is a crowding here. So there will be more crowded here, thereby meaning that that the magnitude is, is greater when you are towards the inside of the periphery and it will be spaced out as you go outward. Okay? So, so this is B is equal to mu naught Ni by 2 pi R and this is is actually this whole thing N upon 2 pi R What is that? This is the number of turns per unit length kind of thing, is it not? So, so you find this to be, you find this to be mu naught n i, right? So this is small n 
and I. Okay. Small n and capital I. This is nothing but number of turns, the mean. Okay, the mean at the mean of the radius. If it is in between, it is it is what? If if this radius is if this radius is small r1 and this radius is small r2 then the radius we are talking about the r is equal to r1 plus r2 upon 2 okay now in a sense the result that you get matches with that of the solenoid. Now, what was the, the value of B for the solenoid? It was mu naught N I. This looks a bit different, but in a sense reflects the same spirit of a solenoid. Right? It is the same thing. Fine. Number of turns per unit length. Sure, because because you you can say that that all these turns, okay? All these turns, they are see the trouble is there is a crowding of the turn turns here. And there is a spacing out of the turns out as you go outside, right? That happens. So when when you say number of turns per unit length here, that is that is more than the number of turns per unit length here, right? So but won't it be uniform? No, it won't. It shouldn't it be? It cannot. It cannot be because these two lengths have differed. See, when, when this straight solenoid was being, if, if this straight solenoid is being bent and you insist that I will not compromise on these two lengths, you will never get a so, toroid. Can you? No. You will not get a toroid. So you will have to compress the inner and, and if not stretch, if you want to keep this as the same, then the inner has to be compressed. Else you'll never be able to form a toroid out of a solenoid. Get that? So, so that's a variable kind of thing. Okay? If you, if you look at a coil, it, it goes at an angle. So, so a coil here, so say if it is something like that, and, and this is the outer circle. And, and this is the outer circle. Then the coils go like that. You see? So this spacing has to be there. No? They are moving radially outward. This is how they are stacked. So you see? There has to be the spacing between the same two coils here is greater than the spacing between the coils here. It has to be there. Right? So there is no there is no sure shot definition of the number of turns per unit length. Because it depends on where you are operating. Right? So what are we trying to do? By, by staying in the middle of it, in a sense we are we are preserving the spirit of the solenoid that we had seen there. That's all. Understand? Understand? Otherwise, this is a variable quantity. And since this is a variable quantity, that's why as you start moving in, the magnetic field starts getting higher. The magnitude of the field becomes higher than as you are going away. So this is the thing that we have taken in the middle. In the middle of the solenoid. Right? So, so there is this whole circle 
there is this whole circle i have positioned myself right in the middle in the middle of the circle as you had done okay in the solenoid though in a solenoid the, the the field is pretty uniform and you need not restrict yourself to be here the field here will be the same as the field here correct but all said and done if you if you kind of understand that we we have deliberately been staying in the middle of it then the the nature of this and the nature of this they are the same correct so that is the field due to a toroid. 